What's up, people? DIY Slaps here with an overview of everything you need to know about Tinkercad and how it works. Today, we're going to be going through all the different tools, all the buttons up here. We're not going to get into keyboard commands. We're just going to drag and drop and figure everything out. Um, this work plane right here, this is what you're going to be building your objects on. You could set the work plane to any size you want. Um, we'll resize it later in the video and I'll show you guys also um, how to pretty much get your objects off the work plane so you could take pictures of the objects without having this work plane um, behind them. So let's start out by just looking at all of these buttons that are all around here that give us so many different options and might look a little bit overwhelming when you start using Tinkercad. So the first one up here in the top left is the dashboard. This is gonna take you back to the main screen when you log in. The second one up here is recent designs. This is gonna show you all the designs that you have created in Tinkercad, um, and you could switch back and forth in between your designs or create a new one. The next one is the name of your object. For every object you make, it's going to give it a uh, automatically generated name, and it's going to create something that uh, is just outside the box. If you wanna rename this, you would just left click that object, and then we would type tutorial or anything we would want and then click off of that in order to make sure that it stays. Now let's look at this top bar, this ribbon up here. This is gonna be where we're, we're doing most of our changes um, to our objects that uh, to duplicate and stuff like that. So the first one up here is copy and you guys can also see they've placed the uh, keyboard command under copy so we could see that. Second one is paste. If we wanna copy an object and paste it, we would use those two buttons. The third one is duplicate. So we could duplicate objects and we'll talk about the difference between copy, paste, and duplicate in a second. The fourth one up here is delete and it also says delete under it, meaning that the delete button on your keyboard can actually allow you to delete also. We have undo, which is control Z on the keyboard and then redo, which is control Y on the keyboard. If we move to the right over here, there's kind of a newer feature, the notes option. So we could toggle notes visibility if we wanna see our notes or not see our notes. We also have our show all. So if we're hiding objects, we could show all of our objects or hide all of our objects. We have the group button, which is what we're going to be using a lot of. The ungroup button, which will ungroup objects so they don't have, um, they are not um, all set as one single object the align button, which is going to let us align features. Like if we were to build a box and a uh, roof, then we would have somewhat of a house, but I would want to align the roof to be on top of the house, not in some weird, crazy spot. We have the mirror, if I want to flip an object. We have the import button, which will allow me to import STL, so objects I want to edit. SVGs, which would be objects like um, images and then OBJ files, which would be things that um, kind of like models and stuff like that. So I could drag and drop that here or choose the file or import from the URL that I downloaded the file at. The next one is export. So this would be where I download my 3D printable object. So I would download it in the STL format for 3D printing. I also have SVG format for laser cutting, but most of the time what you're making in Tinkercad will be an STL 3D print object. Send to, this is if I wanna share this object with other people and allow them to edit it. I could send the object so they could view it, edit it, all that type of stuff. Work plane tools, so I could add work planes inside of my object, so I could change the object's work plane. So this work plane right here where I have an object if I drag and drop a box out here by holding left click, I could drop it down and I could put a work plane on the side, on the top, to actually add different objects to that box. The ruler tool, this is probably one of the best tools out here. Um, this is going to allow us to see all of the different measurements for any object we have out here. So you might notice that I have this selected, um, the box, but I don't see any measurements. In order to do that, I have to drag, holding left click, my ruler out here, and I just like to drop it in the bottom left corner. Doesn't matter where you put it. And that's gonna allow us to see our uh, measurements on anything that's selected. This is the note tool. 
Something to note with the note tool, same idea. We're gonna drag it with our left click and drop it somewhere. I could add a note. This is a note. And I could leave that note there. I could hit this little minus sign in order to uh, take that note away so it's not in the way of me modeling. Or I could click the note to bring it up. Um, they haven't added a feature that we could delete this with the delete key. So the only way we could delete a note is by clicking to edit it and then hitting the trash can next to it. Now let's look at, we have um, basic shapes and we have a drop down right here that we could go into all of our different shape libraries. So I have basic shapes, design starters, and so forth. Most of the time you're gonna be in the basic shapes uh, category, but we could take a look at some of these design starters. Um, you have different geometries, different objects, different things that you might use, letters and numbers, um, text symbols, boxes, whatever you might use in your object. Um, these will be useful later on. Creatures and characters, most of the time you're not in here if you're modeling something from scratch. Vehicles and machines, so if you're building a vehicle and so forth, you guys could read these yourself. Most of the time you're gonna be spending a lot of time in basic shapes in order to model. In the bottom right here, besides the basic shapes, we have our edit grid, which I said we could um, change our work plane so I could edit my grid. I could change my units to millimeters or inches. And then bricks, we're not really going to use that because we're not in the brick function, but uh, millimeters and inches is where you're gonna spend most of your time. And then presets, we have different presets for different 3D printers that you might use, or you could custom preset it for your 3D printers build plate so you know how big the build plate is. To custom set it, you don't have to choose custom, you could just edit here so we could make this 180 by 180 and we could update our grid to be smaller. So now once we have seen all of these different things, we could take a look at the different shapes that we have in here. So shape wise, we have our regular box, which this is going to be an object box. And then we have a whole box. So we have a solid and a hole. These are two different shapes because one of them is going to put a hole in the other or subtract an object off of the other. If I drag this box over onto the box that I have up there, I could actually cut out the portion that I've hold. Um, other shapes we have, we have our roof, we have our cone, we have our round roof, we have a text option, which we could drag text out if I want to put my name on something. I could type that name out and I could place it onto anything I'm making. Say it's a phone case and I want to put DIY slaps on it. Um, I also have a scribble option where I could use a uh, use my mouse or maybe use a uh, something to draw an object and then once I have that object I can create it it shows me a little preview of that creation here and then I could press done in the bottom right to make that object now as I zoom out I could see that object there and we could talk a little bit about different um, settings we are going to have with zoom pan moving our work plane and so forth real quick before um, we finish the video so on our mouse, we have a couple buttons that help us out. We have our left click, which I could click, hold, and drag in order to select multiple objects. I have my right click, which is not going to be used for anything inside of Tinkercad until um, we click and hold it. So if I just right click, what's gonna happen is I'm going to have my, um, my regular right click window come up. But if I right click and hold it, it puts me into a pan orbit view. So I could free orbit around the view that I'm already in. Now, one of our most useful tools is gonna to be our mouse wheel. On my mouse wheel, I could scroll backwards and it's gonna scroll out and I could scroll forwards and it's going to scroll in. Okay, and then if I click and hold my mouse wheel, I could actually move my entire work plane around in order to get a better view of it. We also have these different view options up here in the top left. So if I wanna move around my view, I could actually use this view cube in order to rotate around my view to see different views. I also have my home view, which is what we started in. 
I also have my fit view to the selected shapes. So if I only want to see those selected shapes and zoom in on them, I could do that. I also have my zoom in and zoom out, which we will use our mouse wheel for most of the time. And then I have my ortho view, my orthographic view, which will put me at an angled view in order to see the object in the best 3D view possible. And that's all the tools inside of Tinkercad. Um, we're going to do another video that goes more in depth with how to use these tools and also how to resize, change things and so forth.